My name is Hannah. Hannah Moore. My older sisters are the proprietors of this school. They are very famous. are beside themselves with excitement. Mr. Powell's girls have hardly been left alone for a moment. Shall we close the school early today, as it's the opening night? Did I tell you? Patty and I have been invited to Mr. Turner's residence, Belmont, on Thursday of next week. They say Mr. Turner's mansion is exquisite, and he is the best of hosts. My dear cousin, you didn't see us coming, did you? No, Jane. I was completely distracted by my business. Please introduce us. These ladies are my teachers. Miss Hannah Moore and Miss Patty Moore. Delighted to meet you, Miss Moore. And to meet you, Miss Hannah Moore. Pray, would you ladies care to take a stroll in the grounds before tea? company, I feel very much an equal, and he is so entertaining. I think there is quite an attraction between us. to be married to Mr. Turner. He has proposed to me. Am I not the luckiest woman in the world? In a few weeks' time, it will be our dear sister's birthday. There is no possible hope for a marriage with Mr. Turner. After six years and three disappointments, I fear Mr. Turner is a confirmed bachelor. And poor Hannah is becoming a target of idle gossip and mockery. He proposed to me again. How can I take this man seriously? I refused him finally and for the very last time. And then, to add insult to my injury, he offered to pay me annuity in compensation for my dashed hopes and lost youth. I refused his offer. I refuse his annuity. His money is consolation for the public scorn and gossip I've had to endure these six years because Mr. Turner is a selfish and feeble man. All qualities and esteem I once held for him are now held in contempt. Yes, he is the most contemptible man in the world. in London. We will all three travel to London. I've never seen so many people. And the noise. What are you doing, Hannah? I'm writing a letter to Mr Stonehouse about our visits to Drury Lane. 
What do you think of this description of Mr. Garrick, Patty? Surely he is above mortality. His talents are capacious, beyond human credibility. I felt myself annihilated before him, and every faculty of my soul was swallowed up in attention. I thought I should have suffocated with grief. That's very dramatic. Did you really feel so strongly? I have exaggerated, but I am certain that Mr. Stonehouse will, with my interest, pass it on to Mr. Garrick. He's very supportive of new talent, especially from the ladies. My dear Stonehouse, how pleased I am to see you. So, what was your honest opinion of Hannah Moore? The play lacks foundation. The, the construct of the story is too romantic. I have told Miss Hannah of this and it is a mark of her many qualities that she has allowed me to speak my mind openly without taking offence. Which is why I intend to take her under my wing and under my direction and her hand you will see that we will produce a substantial piece for this theatre. So nervous, Mr. Garrick. What if... Calm what? yourself, my dear. I have been in the theatre all of my life. Trust me on this, the play will do well. Here's your prologue, Mr. Garrick. Ah. Mrs. Blutley's about to speak. I have lost my dear friend. My heart is almost broken. I have neither eaten nor slept since news of his death. Will you go to London? I will go in the morning to comfort Mrs. Garrick and to see him lying in the state. The Christians are a most powerful group in this country. We may find it now impossible to change their viewpoint. Still, worth a try. We will do our very best, Mr. Clarkson, to change a mentality which isn't even found in the Bible. Slavery has been published 100 years after the glorious revolution in England. A revolution that guaranteed the right to liberty and property. We must show that Africans are not the property of their masters and have the right to liberty. Well put, Patty. The well said. Is it not shameful that this Britain, considered to be the freest state in the world, is also the figurehead of the slave trading movement. 